30 to 50 pound line would be a good choice. Now let's get on with another species, the hard fighting Amberjack. He doesn't tend to hang around the bottom of the wreck like the sniper and grouper and doesn't tend to get you tied into the wreck and cut off by the wreck as much as the snapper, but he can still be very difficult to get in the boat. Now tackle wise, you're going to need heavy tackle, at least a four alt reel, at least 40 or 50 pound test line if you're going to successfully catch many amberjack, especially the large ones. The rig, the terminal tackle, is almost identical to the snapper rig we talked about. You might use a slightly larger hook if you're using larger baits. Now if you're deliberately trying to catch trigger fish, then you use the same rigs except you would use a much smaller hook, a very small hook, and even a very small treble hook work well with a very small mouth trigger fish. This is not an atomic weapon, it is an electric reel, and you would need it bottom fishing if you're fishing very deep water, like over 5,000 feet deep, or you're over 80 years old, or you're handicapped. Either of those three conditions should warrant the use of an electric reel. Uh, unless you're just plain lazy like some of my buddies that you're witnessing catch small fish in this video with such a contraption. But nevertheless, that's my recommendation. Another major component of your tackle is the lead or weight that it takes to get your bait down on the bottom. Now the size of this weight will depend on two or three different things. Mainly, what size line you're using. Well, that may come as a shocker, but yes, the larger a line you use, the heavier the weight you must use because of the current applying pressure against the line. An even more important consideration is the amount of current because in heavy currents you must use larger leads to get down on the bottom. Naturally, with slack currents or almost no current, you can get away with light lead. And let me stop here and say that you want to use as light a lead as possible, the reason being that you can feel the bait being taken by the fish much better your rod has much more sensitivity if you're using light leads than if you're using very heavy leads, and you're going to catch more fish. It's that simple. And the third factor is, of course, the depth of water itself, because it requires time to get down in especially very deep water. Now, all kidding aside, we talked about 5,000 feet a while ago with electric reel, but about as deep a water as you would want to fish with a conventional rod and reel would be three or 400 feet, and that can become very tiring. So most of your bottom fishing is done between depths of, I'll say, 50 and 150 feet. This would be the most common depths that you will be fishing. So this also varies the amount of weight that you want to use. Some of you are probably thinking by now, can you catch bottom dwelling fish on artificial baits? The answer is yes, but not all species are prone to accept an artificial lure. In fact, some of them are very difficult to catch with artificial baits. But one I would like to show you is simply a jig. This is a plastic trailer on a very heavy jig. And it's used for amberjack because they're especially curious and they seemingly will just follow baits and even in schools and attempt to take the bait away from one another and more in a playful fashion. And sometimes they are, are easier to catch with artificial baits than they are the live baits that we talked about. Now snapper are especially difficult to catch uh, grouper, which we're not talking about in this tape, but our bottom dwelling species are, are particularly 50-50, uh, I would call a grouper, on artificial and live baits. So do not discard your artificials simply because we're recommending live and natural baits. However, I would say that you will be highly successful using live bait, a little less successful with dead baits, and even less successful with artificial lures when it comes to the majority of your bottom-dwelling species.